Hello and welcome to the first race of the 2012 PCC Cup season here at Road Atlanta. In preseason testing here, two teams were absolutely dominant, that of Griffith Motorsports and Manticore Engineering. Both teams were in the top five in testing. Well, they took up the entire top five. Unsurprisingly, the top qualifier was Grigory Novakovsky making his second start for Griffith Motorsports. Griffith Motorsports swept the front row as Nicholas Corridovos' his teammate in the 39, started on the outside. David Hetzel in the 17, surprise qualifier in third there. As you see, Novakovsky and Corridovos get together as they head up the hill into the first two turns. Novakovsky pulls away the Russian rally car driver. Well, now he's in PCC Cup, now in the back. David Hetzel, he makes contact with Louis Ballard, battling for fifth position as he quickly falls back through the field. Hetzel, however, still remaining strong. Andy Lambert, last year's champion, he gets a bit squirrely there, racing with Pete Maverick, one of the other rookies, and Stringfellow Vincent and Dan Ferre as well. Stringfellow Vincent, he must be having a problem as you see Dan Ferre get into his teammate, Richard Dean McGyver. A couple other guys go off the road. As Stringfellow Vincent pulls into the pits on lap one for a puncture. Stringfellow Vincent's day goes from bad to worse. By the second lap, Nicholas Korodovos has closed the gap on his teammate, Novakovsky. Korodovos' experience in these stock cars is clearly paying off, as he's much faster than his teammate in the turns. However, Novakovsky is holding him off for this lap. As you see him pull away a bit there, Louis Ballard has moved into third place in the number 41 OK Soda car. Chris Benson running in 30th place with Craig Yonser. Yonser gets on the inside of him, and he turns him under the bridge. As Chris Benson goes sliding across the track, he does a nice save there right in front of his... Uh, right in front of Cody Deke, he will continue on. We're not done with Craig Yonser here, as Yonser bounces into Barton Sandy. Not sure exactly what he's trying to do there, but he's been all over the track the past week or so. He's just trying to get the ropes, I guess, to these cars. He's a rookie in this series. Nicholas Corridovos battling with Grigory Novakovsky for the lead. He makes a move on the inside, and Corridovos will be your new leader entering the S's. Corridovos raced last year for this team in the 49 car, and he had some pretty excellent efforts on the road courses, but wasn't able to do much elsewhere. Now, at the other end of the field, Andrew Tamarzan is running way off the pace. He's about 8 or 9 seconds off the leader. We're not exactly sure what's wrong with that car. But Stringfellow Vincent, who, if you remember, made a pit stop, just went past him for the final position on track. Here's Louis Ballard battling with Grigory Novakovsky coming to lap 5. Louis Ballard, he makes a pass on... Grigory Novakovsky for second place. Ballard is going to be splitting this ride with James Kirkpatrick later in the season. They're both going to be numbered 41. And this is Manticore Engineering. We're looking at Clara Kindall right now. She's running in fourth place. Manticore has gotten all three of their cars in the top five. An excellent effort by this team so far, and it looks like they're going to do a lot of good here today. Manticore Engineering is running all three cars for the entire season, expanding to a three-car operation this season. Here is Chris Winter battling with Gaspar D'Souza. D'Souza made his first start of his career last season here with a team called Magic Mopar Racing. I believe that team has folded by this point. They were the 57, but Chris Winter in his debut, he's looking really strong. I believe this is, yes, this is for eighth place. Chris Winter, the rookie, making his first ever start. John Jefferson running with Stringfellow Vincent here, and Jefferson pushes him off the track. Not exactly sure what that was about. One driver who's having a really good run right now is Ike Durbin running in seventh position. He's currently down a teammate, as his teammate Casey Lester failed to make the race in the 44. However, Ike Durbin's making up for that by running in seventh place. Another driver that's down a teammate this week is Cameron Taylor. He's running in tenth place with the Winslot Motorsports Group. He is currently being sponsored by Delta Airlines, a new sponsor that jumped on for this year. And he's giving this team a good run. He's running in 10th place. He won this race last year. Nicholas Corradovos has opened up to a big lead, as you see in these shots here. Louis Ballard is way back there, and I don't know if he's going to be able to catch him on speed alone. I have a feeling that Ballard is going to have to rely on pit strategy, as this race is quite long. It's 40 laps long. Ramsey Cockiner is currently running in the 15th position, one of the rookies of the series. He is currently doing pretty well, actually. We didn't expect him to do so well on these road courses, but I guess he's proving us wrong. He's running right behind Brian Gallagher, who is having a pretty decent day himself. Here's Ben Worthington. He's running about 38th place. He's another one of the rookies, and Stringfellow Vincent turns him! He gets turned into the retaining wall, and Vincent goes in himself. 
what a tragic set of circumstances here for string fellow Vincent and Ben Worthington. You see here, Vincent, he just pulls left, or pulls right, excuse me, into Ben Worthington, and both cars go hard into the wall. Both cars will continue on with a bit of damage, you see here. I don't know why Vincent's running against the wall, but Worthington immediately hits the pits. He comes out here, and you see he's already a lap down. He's racing with Ramsey Cockiner there in 15th place. However, he's already a lap down, and you can see here that the handling has just gone away from that six car. He's all over the place on the racetrack. There's Ian Elias in the 32, lapping him. Here is AJ Murphy, Kelly Blackwater, and Preston Bell. They're running 35th through 37th. Not a very good day for these three. However, they're keeping their nose out of trouble. They're a bit off the pace, but they should be fine because this race is a pretty high attrition race. Watch for these two. Watch for these three cars later on in the race. Australian Motorsports currently runs 11th through 13th. John Bracci is leading the group. Lewis Jones is in is the second car in this group, and Josh Marshall is taking up the rear. This team's been doing pretty well here at the road courses this season. They were consistently in the top 10 in the speed charts. Andrew Tamarzan is going a lap down on lap 12. There is nothing wrong with this car, apparently. The team is just telling us that it was slow off the gate, I guess. I'm not really too sure what's going on here. But Andrew Tamarzan is way off the pace. He is running, like I said before, about 8 or 9 seconds off the pace. And you can see that Louis Ballard is already coming to lap him at the end of that long straightaway. Um, not really sure what's going on with that team. And here is Tamarzan getting lapped by Grigory Novikovsky. And Nico Novikovsky dumps him in the S's. Andrew Tamarzan has been dumped. And there's Dave Hetzel. And Hetzel slides into the sand trap. A tough break for him. He was having such a good run. As we'll see here, Pretzel just had nowhere to go, and he slides into the sand trap. He's got a lot of damage on that fender. He's going to try and limp his way back to the pits. As you see here, he'll dive his way in and uh, get that damage repaired. Here is Ian Elias running in 15th place, and this team finally has non-in-house sponsorship. Ian Elias has brought... Uh, Cedar Point with him as a sponsor and the team has also collected several other sponsors to adorn this car however the 12 and the 52 all still have in-house primary sponsorship this is the battle for 25th place it's been pretty heated for the past few laps between Robert Nelson and I believe that is Gavin DeGray in the 728 there DeGray pulls away but Nelson has been putting up a good fight you see Barry Juveno right in front of us and Ryan Jeffries behind them uh, Robert Nelson, native Australian. Here is Kelly Blackwater and Stringfellow Vincent, and Vincent turns Kelly Blackwater into the retaining wall, just like he did to, just like he did to Ben Worthington. I'm not sure what Vincent was thinking doing that, but it, it's just ridiculous. Why do you, why do you feel the need to turn a driver twice? Well, different drivers, but why do you feel the need to turn drivers twice in the same area? Vincent gets a bit more damage here, and I believe that it is served right to him that he, because he wrecked two cars in one turn. Sorry, I sh shouldn't rant like that, but here is John Jefferson getting lapped by Louis Ballard. Jefferson is currently running the Quantum. This car hasn't been seen yet, but it's covered in Cleveland uh, area companies, this team based in Cleveland. They're running a bit low on money this season. And here is Ike Durbin holding off Winter and D'Souza for the sixth position. It's gotten really heated because Joe Craig there, the 29, he pit early, kicking off green flag pit cycles a bit early. We're not sure if something happened to that. And they make contact. Uh, Craig and Durbin make contact there, but they'll hold it together. Here's Greg Woodard and Richard Dean MacGyver running in two Lycoyas, running in the top 15. They're having a pretty good race so far. Them and the Lycoya of Pete Maverick, who's running two cars in front of them. You just saw him there in that shot. Lycoya having a good debut here. Well, not debut. They did race at the Cleveland Grand Prix with Woodard, but nonetheless, still a good race for them. Here's Gaspar D'Souza and his teammate Joe Craig. Craig goes wide, and he gets hooked into the bridge. He gets hooked into the bridge by his teammate, Gaspar D'Souza. Cameron Taylor is also collected. 
Oh boy, Gaspar D'Souza is going to have a lot of explaining to do because he just wrecked his teammate. The Raptor Racing uh, team meeting after this race is going to be something to watch. As you see, D'Souza just hooked his teammate there. Cameron Taylor piled in. I think they had to remove the hood on that car. D'Souza would continue on, but he'd be pretty heavily damaged. And here's Richard Dean MacGyver turning Greg Woodard hard into the S's. You see as MacGyver almost goes over. And here comes Andy Lambert, and he piles in as well. And there's Dan Foray and the other Lycoya. Oh, no. This is a mess for Lycoya. They were having three really good cars, and there's Barton Sandy sliding in there. He's going to get quite a bit of damage on that. They're going to have to remove the hood on that car. As you see, MacGyver just hooks... He just hooks Woodard into the wall there. Nothing anybody could really do. He tries to back up, and there's Andy Lambert slamming in. He had nowhere to go. The track was absolutely blocked. A tough break for all three Lycoya drivers, MacGyver, Woodard, and Foray. And that'll take all two of the TIM cars out of the race. MacGyver tried to make it back to the pits. However... His car stalled on him as he was entering the long straightaway. You see him trying to get some power out of that car, but to no avail. He'd pull it over to the side and get towed back to the pits. Ben Worthington running here a lap down, and he gets hooked by Gaspar D'Souza, and he goes into the wall again. He's been in that wall so much this week, he should probably marry that thing. But he'll continue on, beaten and bruised, but still racing on. Here's Nicholas Corridovos, and he's smack dab in the middle of the 30th place battle between Gaspar D'Souza, Preston Bell, AJ Murphy, and Stringfellow Vincent, who has somehow stayed up in this group. Uh, Vincent goes a bit wide there, and Corridovos is picking his way through the slower cars. Here's Barry Juveno, and he gets pushed off by Kelly Blackwater there in the 35. Juveno is having a decent run. He is running about 20th or so. We weren't expecting him to do so well on these road courses. And Clara Kindall brings her car down pit road to kick off green flag pit stops on lap 22. A lap later, Nicholas Corridovos would pull into the pits from the lead. He'd pull down pit road. Most of the cars had already pit, especially some of the ones back in the field. You see as uh, Barry Juveno is in there, as well as Chris Benson, and I believe that is uh, one other car. As you see here, Nicholas Cordovos pull out. Right there, there's Louis Ballard. He is lurking, and he gained a lot of time on that last pit cycle. We're not sure exactly if Cordovos will be able to hold him off at this point, but 41 of Louis Ballard is lurking back there in second place. However, I shouldn't say that he's in second place because pits haven't fully cycled out yet. Claire Ossier is currently your leader in the 11 car. She's not really known to capitalize on results, but she's in lead. Here's Ryan Jeffries. He gets hit by Kelly Blackwater, and he slides into Elias. And there's Josh Marshall to hook him. He goes through the sand trap, and he slams into a tire wall, and that'll take him out of the race. Tough break for the 91 team. They were having a pretty good run here. As you see, Marshall, he just had nowhere to go, and he hooks him, and he himself spins in the sand trap. He'd get out and keep going. He's having a pretty good run here. He is running in about the top 15 at this time. Here's a good side-by-side -side battle for what might be the lead after green flag pit cycles are done. Here's Louis Ballard. He makes a pass on Nicholas Cordova's entering the S's, and he'll take the lead, but he slides a bit wide there, and looks like Cordova's is ready to jump on him. And you see right there that Cordova's will retake the spot from Louis Ballard. Ballard will fall back and try and regroup. He just overdrove and got a bit over exuberant there. Not really sure what was going on. Here's Clara Kindall. She's running in the top five at this point. AJ Murphy slides a bit wide and she, she gets pushed into the grass and Murphy goes around. Not really sure what that was about, but it looked like Kindall was just fed up with Murphy blocking her. We'll get another look here, right here. As you see, Kindall goes to make a wide move, and Murphy slides into her. He pushes her into the grass, and I guess she didn't tolerate that, so she dumps him into the bridge. Uh, Stringfellow Vincent almost gets involved there in another incident. He's already been involved in a couple incidents today. Here's Fozzie Dianenzo, and this is a good battle here going for about, about fifth place on back. Uh, scratch that more like eighth or so and he gets into uh, he gets into John Bracci and he's gonna lose ninth to uh, Brian Gallagher there 
tough break for the 62 car. He's been having a strong run. And there's Robert Nelson also getting involved in this race. He's been doing phenomenal after that last pit stop. He's been surging his way through the field. Here's Ramsey Cockener. In the last pit cycle, he actually uh, stalled his car on pit road. They had a battery plug uh, go haywire on that car, and he's two laps down, about to fall three, I believe. And here is Fozzie D'Anenzo, and he's racing for 10th position. A.J. Murphy, he slides wide, and, and then... Oh, no! A.J. Murphy, what are you doing? You just took out a top 10 car! No! You see here, Fozzie D'Anenzo, he tries to make a move on Gallagher, trying to make it three wide. And Murphy just runs the turn wide, and Enzo tries to save it, and he gets turned head-on into the bridge. Not really sure what that was about. We're on board Robert Nelson right now as he sneaks through and gets the position. Claire Ossier still leads over a couple other cars that haven't pit yet, but she is doing a fantastic job. Ossier, again, isn't really known for picking up results like this, but I guess she'll take it here. Her ways may have changed. Here is Clara Kindall running once again, and she didn't lose a position, but here she gets turned by Preston Bell. Rather, she turns Preston Bell into the uh, wall there where everybody else has been spinning into. She'll drive away, but she'll lose a couple positions, I think. One of the two cars to not pit is Grigory Novikovsky. He is running in second place. There's Clara Ossier right in front of him. Gaspar de Souza not really sure what he's doing there, and Novikovsky comes into the pits on lap 30. He's got a bit of damage, not really sure where that came from. I guess he was involved in a little scuffle with another driver or something, but I guess he'll get that repaired and go back out on the track. Claire Ossier comes in the next lap. She is the final car to pit, and pit cycle will finally take um, Nicholas Cordovos into the lead. Here is Stringfellow Vincent. He's running pretty terrible right now and his bad day just gets ended by Dave Hetzel right there and he goes head on into the wall there. He gets out and uh, he I'm pretty sure he's okay but the car not so much and Apollo comes out of the pits and there's Novakovsky. Novakovsky's around. Oh that's gotta suck for Novakovsky as you see Apollo just comes out of the pits right there. I'm not really sure if the spotters saw him there. But it was a hairy situation already, and Novakovsky's the one who has to pay the price. His car looks like it's been through a war zone at this point. Not really sure what else can go wrong. And uh, here's Korodovos. He's re-inherited the lead from uh, pit cycles. And there's Ballard right behind him as he puts Cody Deke between him and Ballard as a bit of a gap. Lap 33, Chris Winter has inherited the fourth position. And what is... Ben Worthington doing and and Chris Winter slides into the sand trap because of a rookie mistake by Ben Worthington not really sure what he's doing there against the wall but he will continue on albeit quite a bit damaged he will get back on the track and here's Cody Deke and what is Deke doing he just spun the second place car Louis Ballard just got spun out of second place by a lapped car nonetheless you see here, Ballard just, he had no idea it was coming, and Ballard just goes sliding into the sand trap. He'd get the car out of there, but at this point, it seems like Corradovos pretty much has this race locked up, unless some bad luck would befall him, just like what everybody else has been experiencing. He's coming up to lap Craig Yonser, and I'm not really sure if that's going to uh, affect him because Yonser was all over the place in the beginning couple laps. Um, I kid, though. He should be able to complete this. Here is Novakovsky, and he is working his way around... Uh, no, scratch that. Novakovsky is getting passed by Clara Kindall. And if you want to talk about somebody whose car has been through a war zone, you need look no further than Novakovsky and the car right in front of him, Ben Worthington. Those cars look like uh, they're straight out of Chechnya. Here's Barry Juveno and Cameron Taylor racing for position. The hoodless Cameron Taylor still somehow keeping up pace. You see there's uh, Corridovos right behind the end. And Juveno wrecks Taylor right in front of the leader. Not really sure what that was about, but... Shame on Barry Juveno for nearly taking the leader out. We almost had a repeat of what happened last year. And 
Oops. Ike Durbin forgets where the brakes are with two to go, and he takes out Dan Foray. Ike Durbin was running in sixth place at the time, and that's just a tough break for him. I guess he just forgot where the brakes were or something. Let's go on board. You see, he just slams into the side of Foray, and that's one of the most bizarre incidents I've seen all day. There's uh, Novakovsky taking a position, a couple other people going by, and uh, just, I guess, brain fade on the part of the 50. Not really sure what that was about. Clara Kindall comes in to pit with two to go. She's running out of gas in that car, and I don't think she had enough to make it to the finish, to be honest with you. Final lap, but the shenanigans aren't quite over yet. Gabriel Apollo gets hit by Barton Sandy, and John Bracci goes around into the sand pit from sixth place on the final lap. And he tries to get the car going, and there's Brian Gallagher joining him in the sand trap. Both of them got taken out from sixth and seventh place, and Ian Elias scoots by and takes that position. You see here, Gallagher just had nowhere to go, and he slams into the side of Apollo's door. He'll get the car going, albeit he's, I'm sure he's quite pissed at Apollo for that. However, bad luck would not strike the leader, Nicholas Cordovas, and he will take his first career win at the season opener at Road Atlanta. After getting spun out, Louis Ballard would fall to third place. Claire Ossier would take that spot from him. Grigory Novakovsky, despite uh, getting quite a bit of damage throughout the race, he will finish fourth. Good run for the Russian. Ian Elias, he slid by uh, Brian Gallagher and John Bracci to take fifth from them. The two would fall to sixth and seventh. Pete Maverick, good debut for him in eighth place. Lewis Jones uh, running in ninth place. and Didn't really talk about him much. And Edward Carroll running in the 36 car. Underfunded team, only sponsored by Ford, finishes in 10th place. A good round of applause for him as that car was pretty slow all day. He just managed to keep that thing out of trouble.